Hello everyone, this is Chad Miller, part of the CAD Geek team at Tata Technologies. Today in 3ds Max, we're going to create and modify some simple objects as we build the desk lamp model. This video is part of an ongoing series by Tata Technologies, the premier Autodesk partner. Follow us at autodesk.cadgeekspeak.com or write to us at autodesk at tatatechnologies.com. We'll begin by creating a cylindrical base for our lamp. In the command panel, under the Geometry tab, I'll select Cylinder, and in the top viewport, I'll click and drag to set a radius for my cylinder. I'll click again to set the height, and back over in my command panel, I can change the parameters. I'll change these to something a little bit more realistic. I'll zoom extents get a better view. I'll change my height segments to 1 because we won't need any more than that for this shape. And I'm going to double the number of sides that I have just to give this cylinder a little smoother of a profile. Next I will change the name of this shape to something more descriptive, lamp base. And I'll change the color. This is only display color. This doesn't change the actual material. I'll pick a, a gray color for that. Next I'll create the neck. With the cylinder still selected, I'll go back to my top viewport and drag out another cylinder, smaller this time. And I'll change my parameters to something that I think will be close to what I'm looking for. Let's take a look. That looks acceptable. Now to make these two cylinders concentric, I'll leave the first one, the, the second one that we created, the neck, I'll leave that selected and I'll choose the align button in the toolbar. Now I'll choose the base and the align dialog box, make sure that X and Y position are both checked on. When I click OK, I have my two cylinders aligned. I'm going to modify the cylinder a little bit in the Modify tab. I'm going to change the number of height segments. This is going to come in handy later when we apply a, a bend to this shape. I'm going to change that to 12. But we can see that if we choose Edged Faces. Now we see that there are 12 height segments in this cylinder. I also want to change the name of this to Neck and the color to black. Now, if we go into the Modify tab, we can apply a Bend modifier to the cylinder. We see a list of modifiers. What we're looking at right now is Bend. In the Bend parameters, I can change this angle and we see in the viewports that our cylinder is bending. I'll change this to 60 degrees and now we have something that more closely resembles the position the, an actual desk lamp might be in. Next I'll work on the lampshade. Back in the command panel under geometry I'll choose a cone this time. And in the top viewport again, somewhere to the right of our existing geometry, I'm going to click and drag to set the first diameter for our cone. When I click again, I set the height. And when I click this time, I can set the second diameter. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now, because I'm going to change my parameters in the command panel. I can either type those numbers in again, or I can use the arrows and drag that. I think that looks acceptable for now. We can always change that later if we find that we don't like it. Now this shape needs to be hollow, but right now it's solid. If 
we want to make that a hollow shape. If we're going to right click on it, bring up the quad menu and at the bottom select convert to editable poly. That lets us go into our sub object level. Over in the command panel, under the selection area, we can select vertices, edges, borders, or polygons on this shape. We want to select polygons, so I'll click that. And I just want to select this one polygon on the bottom. It highlights in red, and I'm just going to push the delete key on my keyboard to take that out. Now I have a hollow shape, but it has no thickness. So I'll make sure that I'm no longer in this editable poly. I'll drop down my modifier list again. And this time I'm going to choose shell. This adds a thickness to my object. I can set that to whatever I'd like. I don't need much thickness to it. Just a little and I want to make sure that's the inner thickness. If I choose outer, that's going to set an outer shell, which I don't want in this case. Next, to add a little bit of realism to this shape, a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to select it again, go into the polygon sublevel once again, and choose the top polygon this time. If I choose to move this polygon, I can drag it in the viewport to change the shape of that object. I'll add just a little bit of an extrusion there and once again leave that editable poly sublevel. Now I have a slightly more realistic shape that's hollow. I'll give my lampshade a more descriptive name, and I'll change its display color to match the base. And now I'll create a light bulb. For the purposes of this fairly simple model, a sphere will be good enough to approximate the light bulb. So under the Geometry tab, I'll choose Sphere. I'm going to create this in the front viewport so I can see exactly where I'm placing it. Make sure it's appropriately sized to fit inside our lampshade. And once I find a size I, will, I like, I'll align it to the lampshade, make sure that it's centered in it, and rename it. And I'll change the color to a pale yellow. I'll create one final cylinder to represent the on-off switch and the lampshade. Once again, I'll drag out the diameter of that in the top viewport, drag to set the height, and I'll align it to the lampshade. In my front viewport, I'll drag to position the switch, and in my Modify tab, I'll adjust the parameters. Finally, I'll give it a name, and I'll change the color to black. And now we have all of our geometry in the scene. We just need to position it now. If we try to move and position these lampshade objects right now, we'll find that we can only move one at a time. And that's going to undo all of the aligning and positioning work that we've already done. So instead of doing that, we'll make things easier and put these in a group. We'll draw a window around the three objects that we want to group together. In the menu bar, we'll select Group in the Group command, enter a name for the group, and when we select OK, those three objects are grouped together. We can see this by selecting on any one of them and finding that all three of them highlight.
Now, we can move these three objects as a group into position, saving a lot of time that we would have spent repositioning those objects. I'll put that where I want it. And then we'll take a look at our perspective view and see that we've quickly and fairly easily created our lamp object. I hope this demonstration was helpful as you begin to create and modify objects in 3ds Max. As you can see, there's a lot more to explore, and this scene will give us a good starting point for some more advanced topics like lighting, materials, and animation. Once again, this is Chad for Tata Technologies and the Cat Geeks blog. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. And if you're interested, check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching.